I love to talk about calves, so I'm a calf fanatic. Dave and I were wondering, like Jim Wendler had his, pro, he had his seminar here a few weeks ago and everybody of course was squatting and benching and Dave and I were laughing. And Dave said, so I wonder how many people will be doing calf raises when they come to see yours? Because everybody knows I'm kind of a calf fanatic. Um, calves, so here, I, calves are like freaking indestructible. Um, couple things with calves. I'm going to share some lessons I've learned with you with calves. People think I have really good genetics in my calves. I don't. I don't have good genetics and I have plenty, plenty of pictures to prove it. I've figured out how to get my calves to grow though. There's some things that I learned. Okay, one of the things is, and this is kind of common sense, is when you uh, walk around all day, I mean you're, you're kind of contracting them. You're not really stretching them. So Logically, I always felt like the stretch part of a calf movement was really important. But what you see in most gyms is you don't see people stretching their calves, you see people bouncing out of the bottom of calf movements. So they're really losing the benefit of that stretch. So I like to slow down the stretch and really, really focus on a stretch on every rep I do. If I can't get all the way up on my toes, I'm okay with that, but there is no excuse for not getting a good stretch. The stretch part to me is the part that your body, again, it's the part that your body's not used to. Unless you have some shoes where you have something crazy welded onto the top of your shoe, then you're not getting that stretch. So stretch your calves. Second of all, they can handle insane volume. Um, actually, I should say frequency. They can handle insane frequency because you're walking on them every day. So I am absolutely 100% for training your calves every single day. Now, here's another lesson I learned. I was thinking about my arms, and people were always asking me, well, why do you always train your buys with your tries? I don't always, but I do like that approach because I like having that area just completely loaded full of blood. Like you got all the blood in there in your buys and your tries. I just love that feeling. I always felt like that contributes to overall growth by doing that. So I thought about, well, what do we do in our cab training? We train our gastrox and our soleus, but we don't train our tibias, right? Our tibialis anterior. So I started adding in some really basic stuff for tibia in between the, the standing raises and seated raises, bam. Like I got instant growth in my calves. And I'm talking about real simple stuff. I'm talking about you could like hang your toes off of something and just raise your toes up. You, you mean all you're doing is dorsiflexing your foot. You could do 25 of those in between each set of your standing calf raises and that you'll start to feel that whole area below your knee, feel full of blood the same way your arms feel full of blood. That's a really cool technique that looks kind of goofy when you see people doing it in the gym. And I probably wouldn't have a beginner in the gym that should be doing squats and benches. I probably wouldn't have him do tibia raises. But this is one of the cool things I think you can do to help your calves grow. So train your tibia, train it with high frequency. Now, in terms of the actual length of the workouts, my calf workouts are anywhere from five to 10 minutes. So it's like four or five sets. The fifth set is a really crazy hard one, and then I'm done. But, and, and honestly, a lot of, when I think back about when my calves were growing the most, it's literally when the only time I took training off of them was when I, my feet started to hurt. I would literally train them so much that my feet would start to hurt, and I'd say, okay, that's my body saying I need to back off, so I back off. So really, a lot of frequency. You don't need a lot of sets. Work the stretch and work your tibia. Okay, so the question was, you were looking, what I put up with, let me, let me show you, let me pull that back. All right, <clears throat> so the question is, am I incorporating those for chest and back, the red highlights are the ones on high frequency, am I incorporating all four phases? Remember what I said, that's too much, no. The high frequency body parts, you gotta pull back the RPE, you gotta pull back the intensity. The harder workout, in this case, would be on a Wednesday because you have two days off, but the answer is no. Now, what about, say, your, um, uh, your hams, glutes, where's the quads? Okay, I left the quads off here. Let's just, let's just presume this ab says quads, all right? So that workout, you could do that. This one, because you're only going to do it once a week, that workout would be fine to use that old, the, the standard, but, but the high frequency body parts, too much. And in terms of the volume, there is some, 
some pretty good literature out there on, uh, there's a Norwegian study they did where what they did was they spread all the volume out. Let me tell you what I mean by that. So let's say they had somebody doing back 15 sets Monday and then 15 sets Friday. That was 30 sets. What they did was they looked at um, higher frequency with the same number of sets. So like, let's say you took it, to, took it to three days, that 30 sets become 30 sets still, but spread over three days. And then you could actually even do it four days, and, but it's still only 30 sets. And that's, what I, that's actually what I'm trying to do with my high frequency stuff. Um, I'm trying to keep the same number of sets that I would have had doing it twice. I'm just spreading out the volume. So the high frequency workouts are actually a little bit shorter. Um, they're actually a little bit shorter compared to the base workouts. But that's what we're doing. We're spreading out volume. Okay. Um, all right. I was planning on moving on to nutrition now, but before I do that, any more training questions? Yes. Do you have any suggestions as far as women's versus men's in developing certain like weaknesses and body parts? Because obviously there's different focuses for men's and women's. What were your I think, um, so the question is women specific training, is there any t type of adjustments I make? <sighs> yes and no. I mean, I have a lot of women that train just, they may they look at the girl right beside you to your right. She's an animal. No, you, I'm talking about you. <laughs> She's an animal. She can do anything that Dave can do. She's, there's no, there's no need for me to have her do 20 plyometric box jumps and try to convince her that that's going to all of a sudden magically give her awesome legs. Okay, I hate that stuff. Um, but I will say this. Um, we all have a different idea of what we want to look like. And when I train a woman, I ask her, this is what I think, now you tell me what you want to look like. When I think about a woman's physique, I always think about, um, I'll start at the bottom. So calves will shape to them, a quad sweep, so there's nice flare to the side of their legs, a tight waist that flows into some lats, so she has a nice pretty V taper, some nice wide shoulders to kind of really accentuate that V taper. It's a, that's the shape I have in my mind. So I try to train women, if that's the shape they have in their mind, I try to train them to achieve that shape. So what does that mean in real life? It means I'm probably not going to do a ton of like heavy rows. I'm probably going to work more on her shoulders, more on her upper lats. But as far as making wholesale changes because it's a woman, no. I think women should bust their ass just like guys do. And actually, I think, actually the truth is, I think a lot of guys should work as hard as the women. But, um, but not really. I mean, women don't have like a special muscle fiber type that men don't have. They don't respond to all this stupid plyometric stuff. Doesn't give them magical bodies. Um, Get in there and basically you do the same thing, but just little tweaks you program. Now, women like to work their glutes a lot more than guys do, which I totally get. Um, so a lot of times we'll have some extra glute work in there. I actually like for guys to do a lot of glute work, but it's just guys typically don't do that. I do, I train my glutes every single Monday. Um, so maybe some small tweaks, but nothing magical, you know. Thank <laughs> you.